let's have a little conversation about the pre-entrepreneur phase. And let's have a conversation about fear. If this is your first time here, I'm Glendon Cameron. I'm your corporate coach, your money coach, and I'm here to teach you how to make money so you can have a better life. So let's go ahead and talk about, I'm scared. Uh, one of the things that I consistently see is a lot of fear and apprehension about starting a business. And the fear and the apprehension, I'm about to tell you something that no one else on YouTube is gonna tell you. If you start a business 100% guaranteed, you're gonna make mistakes. It's gonna happen, you're gonna make mistakes. This, 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 this is a guarantee, you will make mistakes. I'm about to tell you of some of my business mistakes. When I first came here on YouTube and I was selling my first digital product, making money A to Z with self storage unit auctions, uh, my book was an editorial um, nightmare. I had a lot of typos. I had to release that book, not once, not twice, but three times. And that was a big mistake. It was a public mistake. And here's the thing, even though it was a mistake, I was making money. I was making a lot of money, even though that book had many issues. I'm about to tell you another mistake that I, I've made. Um, I started running paid traffic a few weeks ago, about four weeks ago. And as I built out my creative, which was my ad and built out my webinar, and I noticed that things weren't converting on the back end. And once I actually looked at the data, as my friend is very fond of saying, because you're just buying data when you run ads, um, I saw that the landing page was uh, a hot mess. Hot mess. It, it just wasn't going to work for cold traffic. Now, here's something else that's really, really funny. The way that I had literally set my business up, Hustlers Kung Fu, B school for hustlers was not appropriate for cold traffic. It was appropriate for warm traffic. And once again, that was a mistake that I was uh, unaware of. I've been an entrepreneur for 12 years. And here's the thing, even though that was a mistake, I made millions of dollars. I made millions of dollars. So in business, mistakes are good and this is one of the things i consistently see with people who are in suspended animation they're um, afraid to take action or they're seduced by fast money schemes uh, i've been watching ads and i see there's a lot of fast money schemes like right now there are some prominent youtubers that are talking about age corporations can get you funding and it's quick in 30 days i'm here to tell you it's an absolute lie it is an absolute lie because essentially you go ahead you know and i've had like four or five people who have bought age corporations and bought some seasoned trade lines for these age corporations and they're finding it impossible to get additional funding i'm going to tell you why one of the reasons that it's hard to get additional funding is we are in a different banking era. When a bank, like when I got my EDL loan, guess what I have to show them? I have to show them bank statements to my business. And this is one of the easiest loans in the world to get. Easy, easy. And I still had to show bank statements. I had to show a copy of my lease. And this is a super easy loan to get. Now, when you go to Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and you're trying to get a business loan, they're gonna ask you for tax forms. They're gonna ask you for bank statements. You know, the age of your business is 100% irrelevant. You must have age, you must have bank statements, you must have tax forms, or in the case of EDL loan, I didn't even have tax forms. So one of the things is that People, because I understand the allure and the appeal of this stuff now. I understand that you want something really quick, really fast, because you're scared. 
So if you could do something on Monday and get a result on Saturday, that will abate your fears. And I'm here to tell you, you're gonna make mistakes and more than likely you're gonna do something that you're gonna lose money. And that is good. You wanna know why? To coin the phrase, my friend Tommy Powers was saying is you're buying data. When you spend money in business, you're buying data. So it's not like a long-term or catastrophic mistake. You just like, oh, I have more information. Cause like literally, once I got the correct information, what did I do? I literally dug in my business and tore it apart. Cause now I'm operating on real information. I'm operating on the proper data. And th this is one of the things that so many people are seduced by these quick money schemes because it, you, you're looking for quick results. And I'm about to say something. And this is something I've been talking about for years. In business, you are looking at a two to three year journey. And in the beginning, it's going to suck. It's going to suck. Your first two or three years might absolutely be hell. They may be, depending on what business you get in, what business model, depending upon your level and skill sets as an operator. Uh, it could be really, really rough. But one of the things that I want to tell you is if you take these two to three years and make your mistakes, take your lumps and build a solid, sustainable, durable business, you will be really grateful three years from now because you'll have something that is giving you cash and all of these quick money schemes, all of these, well, you, you know, I, I've seen several YouTube channels and I'm not going to start any YouTube wars, but I saw someone that said they got millions of dollars in business credit in just a few years. And I cannot honestly say that that is untrue because I don't know. But what I'm going to say as someone who has developed business credit, $150,000 worth of business credit in literally four or five months. And what I went through, I'm like, I'm a little dubious. Let's just say that. I'm not going to call this person a bold faced lie. I'm not mentioning any names, but I am seeing how this YouTuber gets people because essentially <clears throat> one of my greatest claims to fame is I tell you the truth and the truth is vastly unpopular. I've been looking at the YouTube channels that are growing and there's a common theme. You can do it. It's easy. You can do it. It's easy. You can do it. It's easy. This is the common theme. These channels grow. I read the comments. People love this stuff. And no one is really getting actionable results. It's just like they, they, they like what they sound. It's like when you go to an evangelist gospel church and you get all gassed up on the word and the Lord and the scripture. And at the end of the day, you're filled spiritually. You're fulfilled spiritually, but from a practical application standpoint, you get zero. And I, I looked at this because I've seen it. Like uh, there's another YouTuber and he started a real estate channel and I'm beginning to understand because you know, it's like how to get into car flipping and how to do all this other stuff and all this hustles, 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 even though he himself has a durable, sustainable business model. But he ain't talking about that that much. He's just talking about hustles because this is what the culture is looking for. And I am going not, you know, and I had a comment that, you know, once again, this is new social media policy. If you leave a crazy comment, I'm not going to engage. I'm just going to block you and delete your comment. And it was like, now you anti hustle. I hate when people misinterpret me telling you the truth, telling you the things you need to hear, not telling you what you want to hear as now I'm anti-hustling. I did a video, it's like 
hustling is a great place to start. That doesn't sound like I'm anti-hustling, but as someone who has walked that path, my storage auction business was a hustle. And the minute my partner developed colon cancer, rest in peace, Francine, and the minute I got sick, we had to shut that down. So I actually 100% know what's gonna happen if you start a hustle and something bad happens. That hustle's gonna deteriorate. Your orbit's gonna deteriorate. And I also, as someone who had a heart attack in 2019, and it didn't really look good for me when I was in the hospital. I was in the hospital almost four weeks. Uh, I didn't work for five months because I had built a business. I didn't have to touch my money, my cash money in the bank. I didn't have to touch it. I didn't, my business was able to pay the bills. I was able to pay the bills from my business, even though I wasn't working. And this is the message the, that I'm going to work on because essentially when you build a business, it can't be ripped apart by life. When you build a solid, sustainable business, it can't. So we're gonna get into building businesses, how to do business funding, how to buy businesses. We're gonna get into how to set up corporations, C-Corp, sell stock. We're, we're, we're getting into a different level of content because it's gonna be my job to do it because no one else is doing it on YouTube. Everyone is predicated on creating content that gets views, which is going to go to the late, the basic lowest denominator versus actionable content that you need to hear. That if you deploy and act on this content, you're gonna have a better life. And that's what I'm about. Because like I said, I'm not gonna to lie to you and tell you, you start a business, it's gonna be all easy. You're gonna make mistakes. I have made million dollar mistakes in my business. And until I started running paid traffic, I was completely unaware. But here's the thing, even though I was making mistakes, I was still making money. So when you get into the game of business, depending on how you're playing it, you can make mistakes and you can still win. And then you can learn from those mistakes, apply that knowledge to your business, and then win even more. So yes, when you start your new business and you've never had a business before, you're gonna make some mistakes. Yep, it's gonna happen. Uh, when you start your business, you're going to find out stuff that, and here, here's another thing. Every one of us who starts a business, we are operating on a thesis of assumption. We assume that the marketplace is going to want what we have to offer. We're making an assumption. And until we start putting stuff together and put it in the marketplace where the marketplace can go, yeah, we want that. Boo, hiss, we don't want that. Until we do that, we don't know. We're operating on this thesis of assumption. But until you put it together, put it out there, I had a friend, and this was when I was doing that high level consulting at $50,000 per client per month. And he was just like, how'd you know this was gonna sell? Now I had, I was like, how would they know they could buy it if I didn't say I was selling it? It's the thesis of assumption. And once again, this goes into the belly of fear. Like I have all these assumptions and what if I started and no one wants it? What if I go ahead and do this and I fail? What if I go ahead and spend this money and I don't get a return? And these are important facts. These are, these are facts, but until you actually activate, you're never gonna know. If I had not written that book, and this is one of the things, this was a win. This is, as what Flossie Carter likes to say, was a go. I remember when I was writing my first book and I approached someone to be an editor and she thought my book was horrible and she says she needed to write it. And you know what I did? I took my manuscript, I found someone else to do the editing and I released it a week later. Now, why is this important? 
when I started my YouTube channel, when I started my blog, and I wrote my first book, I had a 14 month head start on Storage Wars, Auction Hunters, and there was another storage auction show. I had a 14 month head start which if I had followed her advice, I would have not had a 14 month head start. Now, why is this important? Because I had this 14 month head start for literally three years, I owned the storage auction information, content and training business space. There was no one else. There was no one else in the space. And then there was a, a blog that was talking junk about me and then literally once it was dying down a lot of people came out with storage auction books how-to books how-to products and all this other stuff and they had literally missed the wave so that decision to put out a book to go forward even though i was scared even though i didn't know what was going to happen was one of my best decisions ever because I was able to catch that wave as it was developing because there was no storage auction space when I started. This was something that became developed when the shows went on and every time they would run uh, storage auction wars reruns, my sales would go through the roof. And I positioned myself because I put my stuff out there. Even though I didn't know what was gonna happen, even though I was scared, and I made a lot of mistakes. Bruh, I made a ton of mistakes. I essentially probably left 10 million on the table because of all the mistakes I made. So, in business, and you know, I am a seasoned operator. I've been doing this 21 years. And I'm still making mistakes. So, is you as a new entrepreneur to pin your hopes, wishes, and dreams on putting out a perfect offering out the gate, no mistakes, no losing money, no learning curve, is foolish. You should assume that, yeah, I'm gonna start my business, I'm gonna make some mistakes. Yep, I'm gonna make some mistakes. I'm gonna spend some money, it ain't gonna go well. Like, when I started running paid traffic, I knew that I had to do testing first. I knew this. I knew from a very conscious level that when I started spending that money that I wasn't gonna get a return because I had to do testing. Why? Going back to the thesis of assumption. I had some assumptions that I found out wouldn't work. I made an ad, I thought the ad was legit. Um, viewer rate was like 17%. I was like, they don't like that. Next, made another ad. It went up to 25%. Then I had this ideal. I'm gonna put the Porsche in. I'm gonna put the ATM receipt in. Went up to 44%. So I had this assumption that these things were gonna work, but until I tested them, I didn't know. And this is where many of you are. You, you're full of assumptions you're full of hopes, you're full of dreams, and you're scared to actually activate and put it out there. I mean, you may go ahead and create some and put it out there, put your heart and your soul in it, put your foot in it, and the marketplace may go, nah, we don't want that. You know what you do? Take the information that you learn because now you have data. Now you know like, okay, they don't like that and you have data points and then you go back into the lab and you create something else. And then like, it, it's a process. Once again, and I've talked about this and this is something that's funny, that none of my haters ever, ever mentioned this. When I was creating the Craigslist course, the marketing system, I did it on videos. I said I had to start it and what did I say? I had to tweak it because I put out my first ads and I got feedback and I learned what worked, didn't work, wrote some more ads, got feedback and just kept tweaking it and tweaking it until I got it perfect. But in the, from the beginning, it wasn't perfect. 
it took me literally three months of writing hundreds and hundreds of ads to work out my technique, work out my sequence. In the beginning, it wasn't perfect. And then when I created the Craigslist protocols, same thing. So in my videos, I consistently talk about you have to go off with a, a thesis of assumption and then work on it because more than likely your assumptions are going to be wrong. Your assumptions are not going to be valid. Your assumptions are going to not be what you think they will be because until you test your assumptions in the marketplace, you're never going to know. And there's some of you who are going to sit on your dreams, you're gonna sit on your aspirations, you're gonna just, and you're never gonna take action. And you're gonna become an old person and you're gonna be like, I wonder what would happen if I had tried that business. And you're gonna be chewing on the bitter pills of regret because you did not take action because you were scared. Look, the mistakes are gonna happen. I'm here to tell you, like, I'm, I've been doing this 21 years, I'm still making mistakes. I'm still making mistakes. There is no entrepreneur who can give you a 100% guaranteed surefire method of success. There's no one that can do that. And this is one of the reasons I don't lie to you because if you're operating from a principle of truth, you are educated and you know what you're getting yourself into. But if you're just being seduced by one of these money-making schemes and you're gonna spin your bread and then you find out it don't work, or you're gonna listen to these people who are just doing videos for clicks, let's talk about YouTube. Uh, like, I know the big change in the channel, I'm gonna see my views go down. But here's the thing. When I was making a million dollars from this channel, I had like 10,000 subscribers and my views were not that high. So I know from a conscious place that I can take that hit and get a better customer. I can get a better customer so I can do more with less. I know this. Cause I've been here, I've been around, I've been around the block a few times. I know this. So this is one of the reasons that I live in the truth because when I ran those ads, they exposed some blind spots. They exposed some problems with my business. They exposed um, a lot of issues with my business that I was 100% completely unaware of. I didn't know what I didn't know. And I'm telling you this and I'm being this transparent with you to give you the ability to get over yourself to get over your fear and to actually activate and start putting your stuff out there. Don't worry if the marketplace is saturated. They don't have your stuff. Don't have your sauce. You're not going to know unless you try. So stop being a frady cat and go ahead and put together whatever you want to put out there and put it in the marketplace. And then when the marketplace gives you feedback, which is data, then you're just like, okay, I need to tweak this, or maybe I need to start all over. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's in your heart. I don't know what you're working on. But I'm just doing this message is to let you know what's gonna happen. And I just went ahead and outlined a whole bunch of mistakes that I made. And you know what? I still make millions of dollars while simultaneously making mistakes. You wanna know why? If you don't play, you can't win. If you don't play, you can't win. And a lot of you are not playing. In my video, The Great Wealth Transfer, it's gonna miss so many people because they're not positioning themselves. They're not playing. They're looking for all of these fast money hustles which are not durable, which are not sustainable. And I need to speak on this because I'm gonna be a YouTuber that's gonna give you information. I'm gonna give you the truth. <clears throat> I'm gonna, you know, and as unpopular as that's gonna make me, <laughs> 
I'm still going to do it because I have a conscience. And like, I would never put out a video. And like I said, I, I've been watching YouTubers who grow really quickly. And it is a conscious theme that it's easy, it's simple, and you can do it fast. And they're lying to you. They're peeing down your back and telling you it's rain. They're lying to you and people are eating it up with the big spoon because that's what they want to hear. That's what they want to hear because this is the echo chamber they may be in or whatever, I don't know. But go ahead, whatever business model you got and get started. I don't care if you don't have perfect credit. I don't care if you don't have no money. There is something you can do with your business to get started today and that's something you need to do. Because what did I say? It's two, three year journey. And in that journey, mistakes will be made. You're gonna discover stuff about your business. You're gonna discover stuff about yourself. And one of the things that you will discover is you're more powerful than you think you are. You will discover this. And this is gonna make you great. This is going to build a better person. This is going to open up the doors to your greatness because there are many, many entrepreneurs who used to be homeless, who used to be broke, who are now millionaires. And you know, you know what the difference between them and you? They got started, they got activated. That's it, that's the only difference. I know how many times have you been working for someone who owns a company that is paying you a paycheck and you thought to yourself, this dude is dumb as a bag of bricks. How many, how many people have worked for someone like that and you didn't think, this person ain't no smarter than me. And you know what? You're right. But the difference between that person and you is they became activated. That's it, that's the only difference. They didn't, you know, because like my past, um, I grew up poor. I had no silver spoons, but I got activated and I stayed activated. I stayed activated. So one of the things that I want you guys to understand and one of the things I want you guys to appreciate is you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. There are no perfect people, which mean there will not be any perfect business plans. There will not be any perfect launches. Uh, I forget her name. I need to reach out to her. But this girl, uh, she, she was doing events and her first event that she put on, zero people showed up. And she kept on and she kept on and she got to a point where she was doing million dollar events. But her first few events, Tyler Perry tells this same story that when he put on his first plays, no one showed up. But he kept putting on plays, he kept putting on plays, he kept putting on plays. Then one day, he came on the stage and the auditorium was full. But it was a process, there's levels to this. And this is one of the things that I feel that my haters, maybe they are aware of it. Because this is some, I'm kind of hard headed. You know, if something ain't working, I'm gonna keep working on it until I make it work. And that's, you know, what Chet Holmes, rest in peace, Chet, the author of The Perfect Sales Machine, call it pig-headed determination, where you just like, I'm gonna keep on, I'm gonna keep on, I'm gonna keep on, I'm gonna keep on. Because that someday, you're gonna break through. You're gonna break through if you just keep on, but if you just stop and like, I'm out, that's the end. That is the end. It's a wrap at that point. So what we're going to do in the art of holding, because today I was looking at some stuff, I'm going to redo some sections. I'm not going to transfer because I'm, I'm really, once again, running those paid ads expose a lot of stuff. So essentially I know I have to make this in a sequential manner. And also, I'm gonna need to share something else with you. And you know, for many people, it's like, oh, he's creating the online courses, it's always easy money. It ain't always easy. Um, 
Stripe is really peculiar. If you're going to create a course that has finance, credit, or something in it, and you hook it up to a Stripe account, there's a very good chance that Stripe is going to close your account. And that's what happened to me, because it ain't closed yet, but it will be closed Monday. And the corporate citizen Stripe account is now compromised and they have artificial intelligence that scans your site and they come up with some kind of category or numeric score. And, you know, I've been through this. I've been through this with um, Heavy Wallet. I went through with this, the first version of Hustlers Kung Fu. And essentially, once they say we're not processing your stuff, it's pretty much a wrap. So what's gonna happen is, if you go ahead and pay in full, you get immediate access. But if you get on the payment plan, you're gonna to have to give us 24 to 48 hours because we're gonna to have to manually add you to the site. And for people, and I'm, I'm gonna put this out here, like if you were in the corporate toolbox and your payment plan got suspended, because you know, I can't manually go in and do anything with Stripe. But with PayPal, I have a lot more flexibility and essentially you will just not get immediate access. Like I said, 24, 48 hours, and then we will add you and send you an email. So, you know, if those people were on the payment plan with PayPal, I could have went in and did some stuff that I can't do with Stripe. So in a strange way, it's kind of good, but it creates more of a burden on me and my team because we got to manually add people and we'll look over that stuff. But the PayPal option gives you way more flexibility and I can do more, so it's, it's kind of funny. And th this is funny, because I created uh, with Stripe, you know, and here's a little sauce for you. If you're creating multiple online platforms, you have to create multiple Stripes in your main Stripe account. So I set up the Ad Creative Stripe account, which they say has a value, elevated uh, dispute risk, and then uh, they shut down the corporate toolbox but the count that i thought they were going to hit the savage financials because it has the word financials in it they haven't touched funny 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 but once again until you put it out there you don't know so for those of you who want to get on this journey of becoming an entrepreneur uh, i got a video on youtube watch it because this is what you're going to learn in the corporate toolbox and these are the things we're going to do so you can go below and I have it set up where you can get on the payment plan and go through PayPal. And then this is, once again, I'm gonna give you a little bit more sauce. This PayPal account is seasoned. This PayPal account is like five years old and I've run a lot of money through it. And I've even got PayPal loans on this account. So I'm not worried about anything happening with that account. <laughs> but, you know, with Stripe, man. Stripe, 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 Stripe. And I'm gonna probably create another platform to replace the disruptive mail platform. So we're gonna be talking about that. But once again, that's gonna be after I go ahead and create this new training for the corporate citizen, and then we'll get to that. And then next week, I'm gonna have to run some tandem training because my goal is to create um, an hour or two of training per day five days a week, maybe seven days a week, because in the next five weeks, this, this whole thing is going to shape up and you will get the training that you need to be successful and the help that you need. So I am going to redo certain sections of the corporate toolbox. And also, if you're in the corporate toolbox, you will have access to this information. I'm just not gonna transfer you over to the portal because I have a lot of people on payment plans and then with the big transfer, because essentially if I send a mass email, I would have to go through it and, you know, it, it creates a lot of work where I have to go through and remove people who, who payment plans have canceled because until I get that Stripe notification that your payment failed, I don't really know if your payment plan failed or not. And, you know, it is, it's very interesting. So that's all I got for you. Links below and I will talk to you guys in the next one.